And I got my first screen kiss, but it was actually cut. Paul Rudd. It's called All Is Bright with me, him, Paul Giamatti, and Sally Hawkins. This is a little known movie. We did it maybe about 10, 12 years ago. And it's a, it's a little Christmas movie. And I play this guy named Enzomo, who's a South African dude who like, I eventually work for them. They, they, they have a tree stand. And in one scene, it was so hilarious. We, it didn't make it into it. Paul Rudd is a great improviser. He just totally just, he turned me around and kissed me on the lips. It was very sweet, because he was very excited about something, he kissed me on the lips. And I thought, hey, actually, that's my first screen kiss. Did you know that, Paul? <laughs> <laughs>My name is Coleman Domingo. The name of the film that we're gonna talk about is Rustin. People have been saying for years that when they do a biopic about Bayer Rustin, then that it should be me. And uh, so I, when I would do my research about him, I, I felt that there was some kinship. And so it came about pretty organically, and then once it was you know, in the hands of Barack and Michelle Obama, and got greenlit. I think what was very important to me about portraying Bayer Rustin was the fact that he was so inspiring and despite all the obstacles that he had against them, especially being an openly gay man in 1963, um, who had the most amazing, incredible mind, organizational skills, was that he was always very hopeful. Mm -hmm. He believed in the possibility of what we can do and what we, what could, we could aspire to be, uh, to create this world the way we need it to be. So constantly, as he took knocks, as he was sort of sidelined, whether in the history books or even just as a human being in the world, he constantly had this well of hope and belief and grace and, uh, and fiery intelligence and wit, which kept him going. I didn't grow up around actors. I grew up in, in inner city West Philadelphia where, you know, my parents' aspirations for me were like, hey, be a good citizen, you know, go to college, get a job with some benefits. You know, being an actor, what is that? Who, who's on TV? I have no idea who those people are. So when I started to become an actor, I was sort of like, you know, oh, I'm taking some acting classes. Okay, they, they're very supportive, but they were like, okay, that's interesting. But then when I started to do my, when I did my first play in San Francisco, they were still very curious about it. Like, well, what does that mean? We really hope that he gets himself together and gets a real job at some point. And then the funny thing is after I was in the theater for many years and on many stages, regional theaters, you name it, I remember my sister said to me, you know, I really hope you get a break and you, you get something. But until I did something on like, I think Law and Order. Then she knew I was an actor, you know? It, it, was, like a, it was like a three day shoot or something like that, but she, then she respected me as an actor. You know what, the only time I get starstruck is when I go to Washington, D.C. Anybody who's doing something like ambassadors, I'm like, I'm suddenly I'm like, oh my God, you're ambassador of what country? I, don't, I, I never knew that, that was my thing. I did a reading just recently with Al Pacino and I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. And I thought I would be starstruck, but I wasn't. But go to D.C., anyone doing anything to, to right our wrongs, I'm, I'm down with it. I'm always starstruck whenever I see President Obama and Michelle Obama and they, they couldn't be warmer and lovelier and there's a picture of Michelle Obama holding my face the other day and Obama's, you know, I'm, I'm slapping him on the back and talking. At, at, at some point I'm like, is the Secret Service gonna come get me? I'm slapping this dude. But, but we're very familiar with each other and yet still, I'm still very giddy. Oprah and I have become very dear friends. She's a love, she's really kind and I make her, uh, I make her laugh. We were actually on the phone last night. That sounds very name droppy, but no, we actually were. We were just talking about something about clothes. I was like, oh, I can't wait for you to see what I'm gonna wear to the Color Purple premiere. And she was like, what are you gonna, and then we started talking and I made her laugh. Her laugh is like a laugh that I think nobody knows about uh -huh. because it's not the Oprah that people know. It's like the Oprah just talking to her friend and not thinking she's Oprah. Yeah, I'm very clear about collaborating with my costume designers about the clothing for the character. Rustin, everything had to fit more. You know, there are times and scenes where he's trying to conform and so the suit should feel a little too tight. If it feels like, oh, it feels good and fashionable, I'm like, hey, but remember, in the scene, he's a little uncomfortable. Is there anything we can do? So we'll, we'll, they'll make sure that the shoulders are a little too tight and he's, so my body has to change in that scene. I remember this one scene in Rustin, it took place with Audrey McDonald having uh, dinner at his house. And at first, um, the costume designer was just gonna have me in sort of like this dress shirt. And I just felt like, oh, it's not right. This is the one time we get to see Bayard in his house. He's not trying to create the March on Washington or anything. He's actually just at home and he's cooking Indian food. Can we have something more of a print, something from his travels? Because I was, with my research, I know that he loved to travel. And he loved textiles and fabrics and, you know, religious art and sculpture. And we found this really beautiful print shirt and she even found a necklace. I'm like, I think she pulled it off of one of the background actors. But I was, I was like, great, that's great. It feels more like Bayard in this space. My go-to karaoke song, 
probably something like, um, I like, unforgettable in every way. And forevermore, but then I'll sound just like Matt. That's, That's how you'll stay. Yes, thank you. The people who usually win karaoke, I mean, are people who like belt. I'm not a yeah. belter, I'm more of a crooner. I'm old school, I lay back in the cut with a song, it. yes.